Welcome to a tutorial on property graphs for Data 601. My name is Ben. Today I'm going to talk about the concept of a property graph as well as show you how to use Neo4j, which is a standard implementation of property graphs, among others. And then I'll use a Python library called pi to neo to uh, work with the graph in Neo4j from Python. And then lastly, we'll finish up with a uh, complicated combination of GraphViz and Neo4j and PyTeNeo to show sort of the power of graph queries. All right, to get started, um, sort of the background is we've already talked about uh, undirected graphs and directed graphs and awaited graphs. So the distinguishing feature among those is the undirected graphs just have an edge. The directed graph has the concept of directionality between two nodes. And then the weighted graph assigns some numeric value associated with the edge. So you might be able to observe that what we're really doing is we're adding additional features onto this data structure. So a property graph is a further extension of that where um, you might have some relationship with attributes. So as a sort of uh, hand-generated example of that, maybe I have uh, a graph of people, so I'll say each graph node is a person, and that person may have like a name, like Ben, and then I have another name, like Mary, for the per other person, and then these two people maybe have a relation where I can characterize it with a specific category of relationship. So we say is friend of might be the category of relationship. So that's the edge. And then that edge can have a property. So we can say like a duration in years. Right? And so we've now we've we have a pretty clear explanation of what the relation is between these two people. And we could vary that property for other people reusing the same friend type. Similarly for, so these are edges with uh, properties. We might also want to assign attributes to the nodes. So for instance, the node Ben might be having uh, a year of birth and Mary might have the same property but a different value for that attribute. So that's the sort of essential idea. I'm going to show you a specific implementation of property graphs called Neo4j. Um, Neo4j is free and open source, although there are paid versions. There's a domain-specific language called Cypher associated with the database that allows you to sort of query the graph. The Neo4j comes with a web interface, which I'll show you in a moment, and then I'll also show you a library called pi to neo which you can use uh, in Python. I've already installed the Neo4j software on my computer. What I end up with is a web browser, a uh, web page that I can go to. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment here. So this is the default web interface for Neo4j. Uh, there's a command prompt window up here, and then this is a, a display of output here. And then on the left-hand side, we have some navigation options. So rather than manually typing in a query, I'm going to take some text that I've already typed up in the Cypher language and paste it into my input cell. So I'll show you uh, what that code looks like. This is the, the Cypher syntax. So here we have the node type and we have the node name. And we're going to create a node of type person name mom with these following properties. So we'll have like a first name, a last name, a born on date, and then we'll do the same for another node, say like uh, a type person still, but now with the name dad. And we'll give some, uh, some props and attributes and values to that node. And then for two nodes, I can specify an edge between them. So mom and dad, those two nodes have an uh, an edge type called married, and that edge can have an attribute like on date. So that's sort of like the essential concept of nodes and edges with attributes. 
And we can, do, we can go on and create additional nodes. So here's another uh, sister uh, node of same type person. And then we can create other edge types. So now instead of married, we have like a biological child of as an edge type. And that edge type can also have uh, attributes like uh, when they were born. So uh, typically uh, a child will have two parents because we're humans. And so we'll have cis1 being a biological child of mom and cis1 also being a biological child of dad. So they're both the same edge type and they have the same date, but they're uh, sort of different sources. Okay, we'll go off and we'll create a few more uh, nodes here. And then to run the command, I'm just going to press this play button over here in the right hand corner. So what we get back uh, is now an empty prompt and, and some notification that some actions were taken on our behalf. So I'm going to slip back over here to my uh, notes and I'm going to use this command to show us what the entries are in the database currently. So I'm going to match all nodes and return them, limiting myself to the first 100 nodes. All right, so here's our graph. Um, we can see in our, in our browser window that I get back the names of the nodes that I typed in, at least some attribute of them. And I have the edges here between them, so like biological child of is the edge type. And if I click on any of those, so let's look at, we've got the uh, attributes that we've put in, and we can do the same for a node. So here I can expand that to all the attributes associated with this node, and it's a nice sort of visual interface. So this, uh, although it's easy to get started with, it doesn't scale very well, and so typically we don't use the web interface for Neo4j to do large uh, graphs. I think uh, what I'll show you next is uh, the same sort of method of creating graphs, but in Pi to Neo. So let's come over here to this notebook. So I'm going to install the Pi to Neo library. Uh, on my computer, and then once that's available, I will import that command uh, into my Jupyter Notebook. And then once I've got, so Python Neo is now installed in Jupyter, I'm going to use those commands in uh, Python. So here in this cell, I'm specifying where my uh, Neo4j graph database lives, so it's on my local computer. I'll connect to that. And what that gives us now is the ability to uh, make commands in Python that get executed on Neo4j. So for example, this next cell here, I'm going to delete all. And if I go back to my uh, Neo4j graph interface, and I rerun the same query of show me all the nodes, I now get that there are no entries. So now we've really verified that the Python interface is in fact driving the Neo4j database. All right, so now that we're back in the notebook, let's use um, the node command to create a node called Mary, and that uh, can be put into the graph. So now we're creating a node in the graph that we have. And if we rerun this, again, now we have a single return and we'll look at the properties on here uh, below. So that's our node, it's loaded in there. And we're using some Python, but we can still, so all of this was sort of like the Pi to Neo interface. We can still run the Cypher queries that we may be comfortable with um, in Python. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to set up a couple of functions. These functions I'm going to be using over and over and these queries I'm going to use over and over, so I'm going to make them into Python functions. So an example uh, Cypher query that I use quite a bit is I want to figure out what the labels are in my graph. So I can put that Cypher query, run it against my graph, and then return the values uh, in Python. Similarly, I'm going to create a function called how many nodes, and it runs a Cypher query which counts the number of nodes. And I can run that. Currently, I just have one node, Mary. 
And then if I didn't know what the name of that node was, then I want to print all my nodes, and I can do that here. So now I've got uh, all of my, my nodes in the graph currently. So next up, we will make two nodes, and we're going to insert a relation between them. So I'm going to create a person named Alice and another person named Bob. And then I'm going to uh, load that relation into the graph. And let's uh, then look at that graph in Neo4j. So I'm going to rerun that my command of just show me the entire graph. And it shows us this new uh, graph with the new information that we loaded in from Python. All right, so now on to the, the complicated example. So uh, you may have already seen this in your career, uh, hopefully not, um, but there are cases where um, maybe someone has a good job and they want their to help out their family, and so they'll hire their family, which in itself may not be a bad thing, the problem is when that person is also your boss. So nepotism is where um, someone hires, say, their their nephew, and then that nephew becomes your boss. Uh, so there's some overlap between the professional relations and the familial relations, and this causes power problems. So what I wanted to show you today is a, an example where we're going to create some fake data. So the fake data is essentially going to be a combination of family trees for fake names. And then we're going to use those same names and we're going to create professional working relations between bosses and subordinates. And then we're going to ask, are there any cases where uh, someone hired their sibling and made them your boss? Or their nephew and made them your boss? And that would be an instance of nepotism. So let's get out of that. And so I'm going to go over to this uh, this notebook, uh, slightly different one than the previous. We've ar I've already run it because it takes quite a while to run. So I have to know that it works. Uh, but I'm going to install Python Neo and Faker and GraphViz. So we've seen these libraries now before in other notebooks, but we're going to combine them in a somewhat complicated manner. So I'm going to import all those libraries, uh, and I'm going to use Faker to create some fake names. All right. So I have uh, uh, an example. I'm going to before moving into the Py to Neo and Neo4j stuff. I'm going to use GraphViz to sort of illustrate the concept uh, of nepotism. So first, what does a family tree look like? So if we say we have two people and we have a kid, then we can label that as nodes and edges. Right? So we can rerun this if we want and just see how that works. So these two people had a kid. That's the idea of a family tree. And the way that we did that here just in this little cell is to generate a name and that name from the Faker library is a parent, and we have another name also associated uh, with a second parent, and then we, those uh, there's a third name for the kid, and then we create some relations between those, and then we're using uh, GraphViz to sort of visualize what that looks like. I can do the same thing for a larger family where I have two parents and three kids, and here uh, you'll notice that every kid has two arrows pointing into it from the parents, so that's sort of how you know who the parents are, uh, and there's no explicit sort of indicator of marriage. Okay. So we can create um, somewhat complicated family trees. So this is an instance where uh, maybe these two, this kid came from these two people, and then this kid came from these two people, but then this person went off and had another kid with this other person. So can sort of see where family trees get complicated um, and, and what what to call a relation between this person and this person. Maybe it's a, a step sibling. All right, so now let's 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 extend this family tree visualization to understand what nep nepotism would look like. 
So basically, in the case where I have uh, grandparents, parents, and children, um, if two grandparents have this person and this person, so they're siblings, and then this person and a third person have a kid, then when this person hires the kid, that's considered nepotism. So it's because this, this person is being hired by their uncle. So that's a pretty complicated graph. We can simplify this a little bit to sort of the essential uh, graph structure. Uh, I'll illustrate what that looks like here. So on, basically the, 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 the definition of nepotism is when you have a graph structure that looks like this. A grandparent has two kids and the kid and, and this, this child has a kid of their own and then their sibling hires the kid. So anywhere that where you have this structure, that's what we'll call nepotism. So for the rest of this notebook, I'm not going to use graphs, but uh, basically the goal is to keep this picture in mind, and we want to query a, a very large, complicated graph to find instances of nepotism. So as I did with the Pi to Neo, I'm going to connect to my graph database. And I'm going to clear all of my entries in the graph. So we'll do that again. Now we're in PyOtheneo. And we can generate those same uh, cipher queries as we had before. So I'm going to rerun these functions here uh, to print the distinct labels and how many nodes there are and all the nodes. All right. So now we're going to create our fake data at scale. So we're going to make 1,000 people. Some of those people will be married. Some of those people will have kids, and there'll be some number of coworkers among the relations. So this is a mixture of both families and professional relationships, sort of uh, randomly created. The once I've got sort of my numbers set up, then I can sort of uh, go through and create a bunch of people, and these are all my nodes. I'm going to have each node have an age, right? Maybe that was the snapshot of the time it was taken. And then I'm going to uh, create a set of kids. So each kid create, uh, is, uh, has two parents, so that's the parent here. And then uh, once I've got parents and kids, I also want to go up and create hiring. So who hired who? That's the relationship sort of like of a boss and subordinate. I'm going to create those relationships and put those in the graph. So I put all those into the graph, and then I can look at um, what is the size of the graph. So I, here I have 995 people for some reason. I'm not quite understand that. Maybe it's the collision of names. And then I'm going to skip down to this part. So given my graph of a thousand, roughly a thousand people or 995 people, I want to ask how many uh, parent-child relationships exist. So this is my my cipher query to the Neo4j property graph. It's looking for all instances where there is a person and a person. Those are the types. And then I'm looking for an edge type of biological child of. So that's uh, what I created earlier. And I'm going to label the results with the label kid and parent and R1, so a relationship. And what I want to display is the parent and kid names back. So when I run that, I see that from the 1,000 people, there are 6,000 parent-child relationships present in the graph. Um, and so then I look at the top five of those. I can see that the, uh, this parent-child relationship uh, is in both directions. So it's a little bit confusing. This person is a biological child of that person. And this person is a biological child of that person. So you have to look at the directionality of these arrows, because when I ran the query, I didn't specify the directionality. All right. And then we can go a little bit more uh, larger. We can say how many grandparent, uh, child, grandparent, parent, child relationships are there. It's basically a similar uh, query as I ran before. There's 36,000 of those. And so we can see the instances of that um, here, the first five instances. 
And then again, we can uh, sort of go crazy and figure out how many great grandparents there are, and there's 22,000 of those, uh, 225,000 of those. All right, so lots of family relationships. And now we can ask um, how many bosses hired their kid and how many kids hired their parent. So this is the, the, neo, the cipher query that we're going to run against the graph. Then we get back 10 of those. And so we have that Christopher Horn hired Jeff Williams. And Christopher Horn is the biological child of, of Jeff Williams. All right, so this is not itself nepotism, but it's an indicator that there's sort of like a, a suspicious relationship in terms of you hired your kid or you hired your parent. Okay, so we're not to nepotism yet. That's a slightly um, more complicated query. Uh, so we'll first sort of introduce, are there any instances where a person hired their kid and, make this a new line, and that uh, person is a biological child of that person. Right? So we wanna be more specific. We're gonna include directionality. That's the error here. And so we get back three cases where uh, the boss hired their kid. All right, and finally, we can construct a really um, tough sort of question of who hired uh, their kid. Right, where, where, where were there instances where a person hired a person, another person, and that person was their nephew or niece? And we get back 23 instances of that. So this is sort of uh, a query that you could potentially run in SQL against a bunch of tab tabular data, but um, this is a much more natural sort of way of expressing that question.